This is Dr. Brian Taggy, and today we're talking about nasal obstruction. It's a big deal because people who are nasally obstructed, obstructed have overall diminished in quality of life. The most miserable patients that I see in my office are individuals that can't breathe through their nose. And so today let's look at some of the potential causes of nasal obstruction. First one being sinusitis. What is sinusitis? Sinusitis is inflammation. And the inflammation is produced by the response of the body to the, either the bacteria or the viruses, or even sometimes fungal elements can cause sinusitis. And so the inflammation that's produced swells the membranes inside the nose that causes the physical congestion and physical obstruction that leads to this congestion that people are talking about. And so sinusitis can either be acute or chronic. And your ENT physician can ascertain whether this is an acute infection or a chronic infection. Another common cause of nasal obstruction is allergy. Now there are perennial allergies and there are seasonal allergies. And allergy also has the same effect as the sinusitis, but in a, in a different way. The allergy inflammation and edema, the swelling inside of the sinuses, is caused by the mediator, mediators that your body releases, such as histamine, for example. And that histamine will produce the inflammation that causes the nasal congestion. Non-allergic rhinitis is an entity, as the word states, not allergic rhinitis. Rhinitis is a, is a name designating uh, rhinitis, which is nose, itis meaning inflammation. And these are individuals that don't have allergies. They go in for allergy testing and then they come back without the allergies, but they have horrible congestion on examination and oftentimes secretions associated with that edema. Bacterial rhinitis, there's another name for this called nasal vestibulitis. These are individuals that are congestion, congested because of the inflammation that's induced from bacteria, not in the sinuses, but within the walls of the nasal cavity. And one of the most common organisms in bacterial rhinitis is the staph organism. And we'll talk about treatments in future YouTube videos, but that's one of the most common. Septum is the structure inside the nose that partitions the nose into a left side and, an, and a right side. It's the structure that runs down the middle of the nose and in some individuals that septum can be deviated. And here's a schematic of a deviated septum. The cartilage within the nose can be crooked, creating the obstruction leading to the congestion that one feels. You can either be born with a nasal septal deviation or you can sustain a nasal septal deviation after trauma to the nose. Typically when there's a septum deviation, the other structures in the nose called turbinates can compensatory enlarge, filling in the extra space. And oftentimes that needs to be addressed during the surgical procedures as well. Another common problem that we see are patients who have enlarged turbinates. Now turbinates can be caused from the inflammation from sinusitis, or allergies or other potential inflammatory conditions that cause them to be enlarged. Or individuals can be born with enlarged turbinates. And these turbinates are structures, these balls within in the nose that filter and humidify the air as it passes through the nose. The nasal valve problem. So some individuals have weak walls of the nose that cause the valve area of the nose to constrict. And this area of constriction, we call this area the valve. If this were the wall of the nose and if this were a straight septum, 
the measurement of this valve, there's a critical measurement that one must meet to have adequate patency through the nasal cavity. If someone has a smaller nasal valve, then that will restrict the flow of air through that part of the, the critical part of the nose for nasal, uh, adequate nasal breathing. Finally, in mostly in children, you can have adenoid hypertrophy or adenoid enlargement that can obstruct the nose. The adenoid sits in the back of the nose and as air passes that area, if you have enlargement, as we see in a lot of children, that adenoid hypertrophy can restrict the nasal passages. And so see, these are some of the significant causes for nasal obstructions. In future YouTube videos, we'll be talking about treatments and how to diagnose these entities. It's best you see your ENT physician. Oftentimes he can do physical examinations, take a history, do an endoscopy sometimes, and order tests like allergy tests and, and x-rays like CAT scans.